If Chick-fil-A thought it could appease the radical left, well, I'll give you the details of what's happening. President Trump's approval rating has actually gone up since the public impeachment hearings have started, and the witnesses that Democrats keep bringing out say more of the same thing that proves nothing. All that and more, I'm Bobby Everly. This is a 13-minute news hour. And God bless the United States of America. All right, friends, welcome to the show. I hope you're having a great week. Let's go ahead and start with impeachment because there are more hearings and two of the main witnesses that they brought out, the Democrats brought out in front of the House Intelligence Committee were Army Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Vindman and State Department official Jennifer Williams. Now, these two were significant because they were actually on the call. They listened in on the call between President Trump and Ukraine President Zelensky. And what they had to say was more of the same. Nothing has changed. Here's a report from the Washington Times. It says, Republicans pressed every witness on whether they engaged in bribery or were asked to conduct bribes. Each witness said no. I was never involved in anything that I would consider bribery or extortion, Colonel Vindman said. Also denying knowledge of bribery, extortion, or other crimes under the guise of foreign policy in Ukraine were Jennifer Williams, a State Department aide assigned to the office of Vice President Mike Pence, Kurt D. Volker, a former special envoy to Ukraine, and Timothy Morrison, the former senior director for European affairs on the president's National Security Council. So again, this is significant because Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats, through a focus group that we covered on the last show, have changed the narrative. All right, now they are just pushing bribery. This is what President Trump is guilty of, bribery. So we need to impeach him. And yet any witness that's asked about bribery says there was none. So the Democrats have nothing. Representative John Radcliffe summed it up this way, and here's more from the Washington Times. It says, the problem is impeachment inquiry that the Speaker of the House says is all about bribery, where bribery is the impeachable fence. Not one witness has used the word bribery to describe President Trump's conduct. Not one of them. Representative John Ratcliffe, Texas Republican, said when questioning Colonel Vindman and Ms. Williams. Now, I watched the hearings and I just thought they were interesting. And rather than going clip over clip, I just I want to sum up some of the main points. And one of the things that the Democrats were really trying to drive home was this whole idea that what they heard, what these witnesses heard, violated or ran counter to U.S. policy. A number of questions from the Democrats were like that. And these witnesses, Colonel Vindman and others, said, yes, it's, it's run counter to our policy and everything like that. And it's just a, such a waste of timeline of questioning because these bureaucrats do not set U.S. policy. U.S. policy is set by the President of the United States. So all of this questioning basically amounted to, I disagree with the policy. And so now we're going to have impeachment hearings over it. It's just quite ridiculous. The other thing that was brought out is that along with this aid that go to countries like Ukraine and some of the others, it's actually written into U.S. law in these aid programs that corruption needs to be a major effort of these countries. We don't want to give money, supposedly, to corrupt countries, and they're supposed to be working on it. That's already part of U.S. law. So those two things right there show that Democrats are just, they're on a wild goose chase. They're just trying to get Trump, no matter any means necessary. So I, the one clip I do want to share, though, it just it actually made me laugh when I heard it. And this is Democrat Val Demings talking about impeachment and talking about the public and their faith in Congress. Let me just say this. Yes, we do trust the American people. But you know what? The American people trust us, too, as members of Congress, to support, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Wow. So guess what, Representative Demings? The American people do not trust you. <laughs> they do not trust the Democrats. They do not trust Congress. And for her to say, trust us, I just find amazing. A Gallup poll from just last month gave Congress a 25% approval rating. 25%, 70% in the same poll disapproved of the, jo the job Congress is doing. 
70%. They have a 25% approval rating. And she gets she spends part of her airtime saying that the American people trust Congress to do the right thing. It's just absolutely outrageous. So next, I do want to talk about some other polling. Since she mentioned trusting Congress and how that approval rating is so low, I want to talk about President Trump and how he's doing because there's some uh, Rasmussen Reports does a daily tracking poll. And over the past couple of weeks since pub the public hearings have started, there's been some very interesting results. And here's a report from Rasmussen. The Rasmussen Report's daily presidential tracking poll for Tuesday shows that 48% of likely U.S. voters approve of President jo Trump's job performance. The president's overall approval has been tracking up since last Wednesday, the first day of the House impeachment hearings. It was at 46% on Wednesday morning, then rose to 48% Thursday, and to 50% by Friday. All three nights in today's survey now follow the highly publicized hearings. So isn't that interesting? They start the public hearings, and his daily tracking poll for the president actually goes up. And for people that are getting bombarded with all this negative news about President Trump, I wanted to put this graph up there. It is included in Rasmussen's daily tracking poll updates, and it's great to follow. I'll put this up on the screen because, as you can see, this compares President Trump to President Barack Obama at the same points in their presidency. And because of all the negativity surrounding President Trump at the beginning, President Obama started much higher. And you can see what's happened over time to the point now where at the same time in the presidency, President Trump is actually two points higher than Barack Obama, 48 percent to 46 percent at this point in the presidency. So can you imagine what that approval rating would be like without the Mueller report? without all this impeachment nonsense, with actual reporting on the economy, on jobs, on the historically low unemployment rate, on ending regulations that help businesses thrive, on going after ISIS, on and on, issue after issue that doesn't get reported, and yet the president is still two points higher than Barack Obama was at the same point in his presidency. It's absolutely unbelievable to think what that rating could be if the media actually stopped this anti-Trump agenda and reported the news, just report the news, the good and the bad, and give the American people a true picture of what's going on. So next I want to talk about Chick-fil-A because they have been in the news all week long. And as you can imagine, there's a lot of people upset because Chick-fil-A has been a stalwart of supporting Christian values and Christian organizations. It's a great place to go eat. I am a member actually of the Cow Cup Club. I've got this big old Chick-fil-A mug that I take for drinks when I go there. I love the place. And they've always stood up for what they believe in. But now pressure from the radical left has caused them to change their policies. And the series of news stories that have come out this week are very interesting on what's been happening. Here's a report from Business Insider. On Monday, Chick-fil-A announced it was making a major change to perhaps the most controversial part of the company, its charitable giving arm. In a press release, the company said it will deepen its giving to a smaller number of organizations working exclusively in the areas of education, homelessness, and hunger. A Chick-fil-A representative confirmed that the organization will no longer donate to the Fellowship of Christian Athletes and the Salvation Army, two organizations that have been criticized by the LGBTQ advocates. We made multi-year commitments to both organizations, and we fulfilled those obligations in 2018. Moving forward, we will see that Chick the Chick-fil-A Foundation will support the three specific initiatives of homelessness, hunger, and education, the representative said in a statement to Business Insider. So, Fellowship of Christian Athletes is out. Salvation Army is out because the contracts ran out. So, obviously... People were very upset about this. There was a whole lot of tweets, a whole lot of statements being made. Former Arkansas Governor Mike Huckabee put out this tweet. In August 2012, I courted a National Chick-fil-A Appreciation Day, and they were being after they were being bullied by militant hate groups. Millions showed up. Today at Chick-fil-A betrayed loyal customers for dollars. I regret believing they could stay true to the convictions of founder Truett Cathy. Sad. All right, so there are more comments out there, and this actually caused Chick-fil-A 
to kind of clarify their position on what's been going on. And here's a report from the Christian Post. It says, amid reports that fast food chain Chick-fil-A was halting donations to Christian groups, the Restaurants Foundation is maintaining that they are philanthropically restructuring, not caving to political correctness in pursuit of higher profits. The Christian Post reached out to Chick-fil-A Monday, asking them to respond to criticisms that they were compromising their principles in order to appease their ideological opponents. Beginning in 2020, the Chick-fil-A Foundation will introduce a more focused giving approach, donating to a smaller number of organizations working exclusively in the areas of hunger, homelessness, and education. We've also proactively disclosed our 2018 tax filing and a preview of the 2019 gifts to date on chickfilafoundation.org. The intent of charitable giving from the Chick-fil-A Foundation is to nourish the potential in every child, a Chick-fil-A representative said in a statement emailed to CP on Monday. So why is this a problem? Why is this a big deal? I mean, they say they're just restructuring. They're going to be more focused. Here are a couple of problems, all right? First of all, Salvation Army and Fellowship of Christian Athletes are great organizations. They represent great efforts to help children to become strong and, and moral adults, and they help the community, okay? That's number one. Number two is... This whole idea that you can appease the radical left. I mean, whoever in their corporate boardroom thought that this was a good idea, that thought, hey, let's just phase out these organizations and we'll be good, needs to be fired because that never works with the radical left. If you give them an inch, they will take a mile and they will never be satisfied until you go lockstep with their agenda. And here's more. Here's more from the Washington Times. LGBTQ activists are still unhappy with Chick-fil-A after the fast food chain announced Monday it was ending donations to the Salvation Army and other Christian charities following years of backlash. Chick-fil-A still isn't LGBTQ friendly despite a pledge on donations, reads a headline by The Advocate magazine. Remember, Chick-fil-A isn't LGBTQ friendly yet, reads another by LGBTQ Nation. The human rights campaign, the largest LGBTQ advocacy group in the U.S., wants Chick-fil-A to update its corporate anti-discrimination policy to also include protections for people based on sexual orientation and gender identity. GLAD expressed similar concerns, demanding that Chick-fil-A also unequivocally speak out against the anti-LGBTQ reputation that their brand represents. So see, this is exactly what I said. <laughs> you give them an inch, they want to take a mile, and their only stop, the only time they'll stop is if you actually denounce these organizations. If you denounce the Salvation Army and Fellowship of Christian Athletes and other organizations like that as hate groups, because that's what they want. This is an anti-Christian effort to promote their agenda. And the only way they'll be happy is if you go lockstep with them. So finally, just a short report on how outrageous and untrustworthy the media are. And it happened once again, and this time... It was during their coverage of a UN report that talked about the detainees, the children detained on migrant-related uh, incidents in the United States, all right? And here's the report. It says, multiple outlets deleted entire stories Tuesday after falsely reporting the number of children in migrant-related U.S. custody. Outlets including, including Reuters, AFP, NPR, Al Jazeera jumped on a report from the United Nations writing Monday that the country has the world's highest rate of detained children. The outlets reported that there are currently more than 100,000 children in immigration-related custody, which violates international law. So if that's big news, why did they remove the stories? Why did they pull them down, some without even notice or retraction or explanation? Because the UN report used their most recent data that they could find, which was from 2015 in the Barack Obama administration. So this story was about the number of children detained under Obama. And when the news media found that out, they pulled the stories down. So how is that for honest and sincere reporting and journalism as a profession? It's just absolutely nuts. So folks, that's our show for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe. And when you do, please hit that bell so you'll be notified. And we'll see you next time. I'm Bobby Eberly. This is a 13-minute news hour.
Okay, friends, just a little reminder before you go, and no, this does not count against my 13 minutes. Please hit the subscribe button below and tell your friends. And if you happen to miss our last show, you can check it out right here. And also for great conservative news and commentary, please check out GOPUSA.com. All right, folks, we'll see you on the next show. Have a great day.